Have you ever wondered how shamans, superstitions, curses, magic work differently in Korea? Because you will truly be fascinated. Today we're going to be diving into an interesting superstition that has been talked about for generations now. And we're going to be talking about how Korea, the whole nation, was once cursed upon. It sounds super crazy and I advise you never ever follow these black magic curses. And there's a reason why I don't believe that it's technically a superstition and that it's actually real. And maybe all these things we call magic and superstition is actually science that we haven't discovered yet. I know crazy, but stick throughout this video. Talking about craziness, it's almost Valentine's Day. Do you guys have a date? I hope that someone takes me out this year because I'm a fine lady. If you guys are having a wonderful special date, please leave a comment down below so everybody can pull their hair out. Just kidding, but if you guys have a significant someone or someone that you love, even your family, I have the perfect gift for you that I really want to recommend. And it is the Exter wallet. I just want to say a huge shout out to Exter for sponsoring today's video. I've raved about my wallet before and they're the world's largest smart wallet. Everybody will love this wallet. All you need to do is click the little clicker here and all your cards pop out in a fancy way and it is such an easy access to pull out. And they also protect you from RFID protection, which did you know that people can steal your identity, your card information through wireless? WTF. They take it to another level by adding a tracker to your wallet. The tracker fits into your wallet very nicely and two hours of sunlight charge will give you three months of battery. Even last night I was about to pay for something and I was searching through my bag and I couldn't find my wallet. So I opened up my Chipolo app to see where my wallet was. Thank God the tracker on my phone told me that it was right next to me. And not even kidding, I searched through my pockets and voila, there was my wallet. You hear that? I also have a key tracker right here, so anytime I lose my keys, this will be your lifesaver. Exer is running a Valentine's Day sale, 20% off site-wide. It's time to upgrade your wallet to a smart wallet. Thank you so much to Exer for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back. So I've done a couple videos in the past about certain superstition, curses, magic, and even certain games that people play to enter another universe. And it seems like a lot of you guys do believe it and it exists in pretty much all cultures throughout the world. So this story is from a Korean documentary show called Tang Shin Hokkanen Sai. And they start off the video with a case that happened back in April of 2012. It happened near a famous tourist spot in Tollado and it was like near the water boulders. When the tourists were just having a fun time walking through the boulders, all of a sudden they found something that probably ruined their trip, which was finding human bones. Now when forensic professionals did a test, they found that these bones belonged to three separate people. Along with the bones, they found particles of yellow clay and specific type of fibers in the skull. They believe the fibers could have come from funeral garments. It was a specific type of fiber and that's why they guessed that it had to belong to someone that was already buried at one point. Also near the bones, they found burnt pieces of fabric. Now this specific fabric is usually used in traditional practices. It's not something people usually wear or carry these days. They also found a lot of traces of melted candle. So the day before they found this, people in the neighborhood claimed that they saw what they believed was a shaman doing certain rituals. And they were shouting, saying specific words, using candles, and other elements that usually Korean shamans use. Although I'm not too experienced or knowledge at this, the basic information that I know is that usually in Korean shamanism, it is known that they carry gods. So they're pretty much mediums for these gods that was put upon them. So usually fortune tellers kind of look like this in the West, but in Korea, it looks like this. You go to a shaman to find out your fortune, astrology, they do many different things, and they have a god that they carry pretty much that speaks through them. Now the day before these bones were discovered was April 21st, 2012, and I believe this was a full moon. Now the year 2012 was a leap year. Now in a normal year, they say there's 12 full moons, but in a leap year, there's 13 moons. According to the shaman, this particular extra moon is called the dead moon. Now the reason why someone would be doing a ritual on this dead moon is because this is the only time when the gods, spirits, and ghosts are not active. There is nobody surveillancing you from the other side. People who know about this will do certain rituals, certain curses, black magic, because there will be no repercussion. No punishment, 
if you happen to do any negative spells. So whatever this person was trying to do, it seemed more negative than positive. And they really wanted to do some kind of a powerful spell or a curse, and they did not want to get repercussion from it. Now near this similar location in another town, again near the water boulders, people discovered something really disturbing. So in this small town near the water boulders, there is a graveyard. This one particular man Man said that at one point he started to dream about his deceased father and it was almost like a nightmare. He kept dreaming about his deceased father and he just got this really eerie feeling and decided to pay his father a visit at his grave. So when he finally decided to go for a visit, he found something chilling. There were iron rods that were stuck into his father's grave and these were iron rods that was 59 inches or 150 centimeters long just hammered into the grave. These rods were specifically placed at the head and the chest area of the deceased. According to the people who found it, these rods were placed directly so precisely in the head and the genitalia area. Like how would you know which is the top and the bottom and where the chest is and where the head is unless you knew who this person was. But it wasn't just this grave, it was found in 20 other graves as well. They found exactly 378 iron rods. The crazy thing is, it was only put into graves with male family members. So families, living families with only females, there was no rods in their ancestors or family's grave. This is a curse on the whole entire town, not just one family. Who would go to this extent and why would they do this? Now according to whoever's wishes and desires are, these iron rods they say are used to either entrap a soul or a spirit and or it is to bring bad luck to the affected families. It's also a theory that it is used to transfer the energy of that household into whoever was doing this curse. According to other shamans, they say that normal people would not be able to do this. This is a huge work and it has huge repercussions and punishments for doing something like this from the other side. So whoever done this probably received hell a lot of money and was most likely promised a huge power. The crazy coincidence is that two of these cases from the first case the, with the bones and the second case with the iron rod graveyard is that they were both found in the leap year. So is that a coincidence that this ritual was done on leap years during the black moon? So if you think all these are coincidences, there's also another case where one of the shaman was found doing something very similar a couple years back. This one shaman would bring heavy iron rods and iron knives to hammer at famous politicians and past leaders and Korean kings graveyards only during the full moons. And they found about 280 iron rods and knives that was pulled out from all these graveyards. This particular shaman was arrested, and I don't believe that she said much about how and why she was doing this, but the only thing she told the police, she was the only one doing it, there's no one behind it, and it was almost as if she was trying to protect someone. And according to the police, she kept on asking them for a specific book. She begged them to provide her with a book called Namu Mohyo Revenge Kyo, or in English, Devotion to the Mystic Law of the Lotus Sutra. This book, from what I've found was written by a Japanese Buddhist and it teaches you some Buddhist ways to reduce one's suffering by chanting and reducing karmatic punishments. So this is usually studied and utilized by the Japanese who believe in these teachings. So because of this, there were some rumors and stories that started that maybe there were far-right politics behind this shaman. So all of these stories also tie in into one of the biggest mysteries in Korea, which which is the iron rod superstition. This is a theory that was passed down from the older Korean generations who have lived through this. During the Japanese colonial rule of Korea, which was around the 1910 to 1945, which is basically when Japan took over Korea, it was said that they placed a bunch of iron rods on high mountains and famous sacred places in Korea. The purpose of this, the story goes, is that the iron rods when placed in a specific location and points of a landmark, you can transfer or steal the energy of that land and or to literally trap or cut the energy of 
that nation. So in other words, to trap or cut the spirits and energy of Korea for easier control for the Japanese to take over. But because of that, it is said that Korea has one of the highest energy points due to the land being so mountainous. That's why a lot of places in Seoul and Korea that you go to, like you will be out of breath when just walking to another place to another because it is so mountainous. But is there any scientific truth to this? How does this actually work and where did we get this from? It is said that our planet Earth is a conscious living entity or a being just like us plants and animals or pretty much anything you see. It is said that there's many energy vortexes on Earth. There's certain points on the planet that have higher energy than others. That's why certain ancient monuments, pyramids, and sacred temples are purposely built in those areas. And it was almost like a mathematic genius that were able to do this. If you guys are into acupuncture and Asian medicine, you guys will know that our whole body is connected and like one point leads to another organ in our body. I got acupuncture for the first time yesterday you guys and the doctor were explaining that for example when she was putting like the needle here it meant that it's going to affect like your kidneys and like other parts of the body and just like how our own body has different chakra points they say that our planet earth also has chakra points so they say that especially mountains have high energy and that it has something to do with altitude and gravity not an expert at it but it's also one of the reasons why sometimes they say that taekwondo or like martial artists trained in the mountains and altitude training just disciplines the body a lot harder. I know I'm infusing gravity, altitude, energy points, and vortexes all together, but I believe there's a fine line between them. And you guys could probably study on your own to discover more about it. But either way, all these energies are invisible to the naked eye. They say that our eyes can only perceive 1% of the 99% of the light spectrums and vibrations that's out there. Everything's invisible so that there are many things that we cannot physically see that exist. So to get back to the iron rod curses, they say that Japan knew about this. They knew that Korea, the land, had high energy. So some theory goes that just like we have acupuncture for our body, putting these iron rods at certain places is also like acupuncture for the planet Earth. That's where the energy transfer theory comes from according to how acupuncture works. And it is a known fact that Japan during this time, they took a lot of Korea's resources, they burned the historical books, of Korea. They didn't even want Koreans to speak Korean. And it was pretty much a cultural genocide. To farther spark this theory, there was also a picture of a Japanese shaman or like a priest at the Pekdu mountain doing an ancestral ritual with these iron rods. But of course, here is the sides of the skeptics. So there were more iron rods that was placed usually in areas where Koreans were living in. But they say that Japanese put the iron rods there for landscaping purposes. To I guess see the distance of lands and things like that but if you were a Korean living here for generations I mean this land and houses were built by blood sweat and tears by your ancestors and family living here for generations and now you have the Japanese coming in and trying to take over your own hard-worked land so the Koreans started to think these bastards are putting these iron rods to steal our land and our houses and had intense animosity and injustice that they were feeling and some historians believe that that maybe the theory of cutting the energy and stealing the energy came from all these people, you know, having that kind of unfair treatment that they received from the Japanese during that time. But I took a look at the photos and these iron rods on the landscapes were a little bit different than the ones found on the mountains. Now, if these iron rods were placed for landscaping reasons, it does make sense if you put it in more of a flat land where people are living. But why would they specifically travel up to the high points of the mountains to hammer in these long iron rods? I mean, you can't build anything up there. And I saw a map of where these iron rods were specifically placed and, and they were placed only along the parts of the mountains. So of course, after Korea took back control of our own nations, a lot of people started to discover these iron rods, thinking that it was cutting the energy of the Korean people and the nation, so they started to pull most of these out. Either way, whatever you believe, these iron rods are deeply related to the pain that the Koreans had to go through during this brutal time. So going back to the whole curse, this one shaman explains why and how and what this iron rod ritual can bring if one was ever to practice it. 
This one shaman explained that she encountered a similar situation when a client told her that his uncle would constantly hammer iron rods into his father's grave. When the man pulled out the rods, the uncle kept coming back and did this over and over again. And apparently, according to this person, his uncle's household went to a life crisis and something really bad happened to him. She also went on to explain that when you do this kind of curse or black magic, the punishment or the exchange will not only be put onto you, but the whole entire family, your parents, your brother, your sisters, whoever. Even if you do not believe in these superstitions, I think we can all agree that karma is real. That whatever goes up must come down. As above, so below, and whatever goes around, comes around. So you might be able to use your words to curse someone. You might be able to use your physical body to hurt someone else. Just like that, I personally believe you can also use the invisible spiritual powers to curse or heal someone. So I would like to know, is there any superstitions or theories in your country, and how does all these rituals and shaman and magic work in your country remember to leave a comment down below hit the like button it really helps out my channel and if you're early to my videos i reply to you so hit that notification bell